Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're here with another episode of 1899. Uh, we're here finally at the, the, the last episode of this season, and well, it has been quite a ride. Um, you know, last time on 1899, we got a lot of revelations to be honest, much more than we did in, in, in the first season of Dark. Um, but I, I imagine we still don't have the full picture um, just yet. So you know what we think we know may not necessarily be as relevant in the next season. Um, so we got a lot, a lot of information, but there's still a whole lot that we don't know. For those who are fans of Dark, you know, I, um, I, as you all know, what we know is a drop, and what we don't know is an ocean. So it, it, it's I, I feel we don't quite have the, the the full puzzle as yet and that's how i kind of look at these um series in, in in as a whole as far as the writers are concerned because they have um the entire season plotted from the very beginning um they're only giving you a piece of the puzzle and each season contributes so much to the to the whole picture to the, to the entire puzzle and so far we've only we're, we're still at season one so we only have um, a small piece of the puzzle so whatever it is that we think we know I, I, I'm assuredly that you know it's it's only a, a small piece um, so I can't wait to find out more but uh, what we did what what do we know all right um, we don't know that this entire experience that the passengers had it's it's a simulation now my, my biggest question going into this finale is um, I've been suggesting that it's all been psychological and it's all been happening in their minds. Um, but in, in this, in the last episode, we saw where Daniel was navigating his way, um, around what, what I'm, what I've call, been calling the mind palace for each character. Um, and it all seems very physical uh, as though it's a physical, it's a, a, a tangible structure. And so my question going into this is, you know, yes, it's a simulation, but is it taking place in their mind, in Mara's mind, or in, in my theory, several patients' minds, or is this a physical structure and, you know, these passengers had their minds altered and they were let loose in, um, they were released into this, this massive structure of some kind um, that is piecing together images from their mind and, and, you know, recreating it, you know, in the real world. So um, I guess I, I'm just not quite clear whether this is taking place in their mind. I know it's not real. Um, I'm still sticking to my theory that this is taking place in, in their minds, but I do wonder whether it's, whether and now having seen that in the last episode, I'm wondering whether it's a physical structure and they're just um, trapped inside of it. Um, so that seems very plausible as, um, as well, um, but it, it still goes back to the very first episode and um, you know, the mind being as vast as the ocean and the open sky and i feel as though it does have something to do um with these characters and and um psychologically i mean so um we're, we're steering in, in in that direction but i guess hopefully i'll get some answers to that question this episode and then there is the the symbolism with the pyramids um definitely not the Bermuda triangle that we you know that we've, we've speculated for months now we've not seen anything of that sort um it's i guess in, in effect it's acting in a way because there, it's a place that they're they, they're unable to leave and at the end of the last um the last episode we do see where they where the, the ship the kerberos has now ended up in this shipyard where several other sh ships have been sent I'm not sure. Maybe where, where the, the program fails, uh, and then maybe they are waiting to reboot the program and, and try again until you know Mara's father gets what he wants. So it's acting sort of like a, a, a Bermuda Triangle, but it's not in the, not in the literal sense, which makes sense because um, you know that, that that is what they they did with Dark as well in, in taking um, similar symbols from the uh, you know the Triquetra, for example and uh, it's relevant to um alchemical studies and so on and and trying to mix that with science and, and put that together and i think they're doing something similar here 
um, with 1899 as well. Uh, so the pyramids is still very much a mystery. Why, why, why specifically the pyramids? The you know, we know what Mara's father wants to do, or at least what she thinks he wants to do, to repair his wife's um, his wife's mind. Um, and then this, there's the scarab or the bezel, which also has significance in um, Egyptian mythology. But what's its significance here? Um, so there's still a lot of questions um, and if this is a physical structure, you know, how exactly is that beetle doing the things that it's doing? So the, the, we're still not quite sure what's real and what's not. And a lot of this hinges on the device, whatever it is that they're using to make this happen. I need to see that. Um, that, that um, the foundation of my theories all depend on how exactly they're executing this. Um, and, and then I'll be able to kind of piece things together uh, a bit more. But yes, everyone is now stranded. Um, a lot of key characters have died. I'm still holding on to my theory, as I said, about these being patients. And I think there are several patients, Mara being one, I believe Ling is the other. I think the, some the other characters that surround them on the ship are just, it, those people aren't real but they were real and they're a part of the experiences that these patients had in the real world, right? So Ling Yi, I believe she did in fact know Oleg um, and of course her mother, um, but I believe she's like Mara is, is, is a patient as well. Again, could be completely wrong by the end of this episode about the whole patient thing, but I believe Mara is one, um, Ling Yi is another, um, Captain Ike, uh, who else is there? Uh, Jerome is one, I, I'm, and, and I think Lucien is um, a, a figment of his imagination and what he experienced, and Lucien's wife perhaps as well, because it, of the very first introduction we had with her, and her earrings were the symbol of the um, for the company. So I, I don't think she's a real person. I think she's a part of his his mind palace, um, so to speak. Um, and of course, Tove as well. So, uh, so I think those are our core characters, and those are the real persons who are stuck in this simulation, whether it's real or in their mind. I think these are the um, these are our protagonists, so to speak. Um, and 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 I, I guess we'll see what what comes next, especially where the the boy is concerned. You know, I'm very intrigued with that because. Um, Mara spoke about attempting to have a child and, you know, having a miscarriage. So how is it that she does have a son? It could be implanted memories, of course. Um, you know, that is very much a possibility. And I, I think maybe Daniel alluded to that as well. But the boy doesn't seem like a normal kid, um, you know. Um, but my, my guess here, and this is a bit of a reach, but my guess here is that Mara... Daniel and her father all worked to build this um, this simulation for whatever purposes and At a certain point she realized that it would be dangerous in her father's hands and so she tried to sabotage it um, and, and, and lock both her memories and you know You know whatever Code that he's looking for she locked everything away so that she could never find it and um, so her mind is currently in pieces and I don't think it's her intention to be whole again because if she does I think her father will get what he needs and I think she's going I think Daniel is going against her wishes by trying to save her um, and I th and it, the, the relationship with her child is interesting as well because it, it seems as, it, as though she wants to forget about the boy um, so his role in this is quite interesting as well especially in the way her father reacts to him and speaks about um, humans and their emotions um, and the boy seems to lack emotion in some respect and you know uh, with the exception of when he's around Mara he may express he may emote but um, I do wonder whether he's a product of some experimentation um, that her father was you know carrying on so all very interesting a lot of theories um, we'll see um, what, what revelations we do receive in this episode and then we'll talk a bit more towards the very end, but I'm excited. Let's check it out. Look at my fans. Okay, he's actually smiling. I named him Alfred. Don't you think he looks yeah. like an Alfred? Seems very different from the boy that we've been seeing up to this point. 
You ready to talk? Yeah, he doesn't take an effort. You should let him go. How would I watch him go then? Sometimes we have to let things go because we can't keep them forever. You can revisit Alfred. Alright, I mean, this is a memory. She seems quite happy. Boy seems very normal. Don't be silly. I live with you and Daddy forever. No, that's 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 being a bum. <laughs> oh. All right, so the boy has an episode. Him on this trip. Your mother has fooled you. She has fooled all of us. So is he trapped? And she's the only person that can get us out of the earth. So he's trapped as well. How? The key. All right, Captain Knight made it across. Still curious about their relationship. Daniel does not seem to like it very much. Well, it's going to be a bit distrusting of her after this, but... I this sounds insane, but my father... He's the owner of the ship company. And I think he made us forget why we're here. Oh. No translator. Well, Mrs. Wilson is here. It's an illusion, a magic trick, a simulation. Do you remember how you boarded the ship? No. Of course I do. Well, how? No one remembers how they got on board. Just got these, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Wilson? I, I don't know if she, I don't remember if she spoke um, Portuguese. I don't know if he's trying to help them. I know he's trying to help her. <laughs> May not care about the rest of the passengers. He's work! Alright, Dad. Please explain. It's ready. Mm. Exactly what is happening. I don't think she remembers. Why should we still trust you? What's your tr what all what other option is there? The last thing I remember before waking up on board the Kerberos is finding the envelope in front of my door. I think my brother sent it, and this was in it. Is, is she I keeps repeating about her brother, but we we've, we've we've seen no evidence of a of brother it. so far. She's right. We should live on the life place down. Get off this bloody ship. Uh, I don't you understand. There is no way to go. There's nowhere to the go. The ship isn't real. The ocean out there, it isn't real. It's a hard sell. And you stand against the conventions and limitations that women face. But you can't really believe what you're saying. Don't trust her. Let's go. Go on your own stay. Ah, damn it. I mean, it's not like they're going anywhere. You see it. Shafts. Your memory. Mine. He, he, He's been teleported. He must believe it. What? What's his explanation for the things that he's seen so far? So either the two of you are insane. That's something that has been plaguing my mind is why specifically her father chose 1899. Clearly we're in some future timeline somewhere. 
where any where all this technology is actually possible. Why why choose to, to set the simulation here? <laughs> Right, so this one is still open. I think that's her. I think she's the creator. What is this? Man, he doesn't want to reset the simulation, right? I don't know how he's get. I don't know how he gets her out of all this. The key seems to be to getting her to remember everything, but he's ex he looks to be accelerating it. I mean, do you guys believe now? Does any of this look real? Oh, they lost each other. That's not good. Did you see her get dragged and taken there? It could be maybe at the time she was pregnant was... with him. I know you think it's your mother who's trapped him here. This is not her prison. It's yours. Is so she trapped them all there. Why would she trap her son? I can't stop him from dying, Mora. Mora, mom, dad. You know this isn't right. Hmm. Don't worry, my love. So he's dying and she was trying to tempt him to save him. Saving way is the only way for us to be together. So she trapped him in this in some sort of simulation. How does that keep him alive? And how's her father here? When your mother was your age, she found a paper on Plato's cave allegory in my study. She was clearly too young to understand the abstract concept Plato was suggesting. Is Mara the villain? The idea that our knowledge has limits and that we can never know if things truly are how they appear. We are in a slumber, unaware of the true nature of things. One evening she came to me and said, If it's true what Plato argues, then how do we know if anything is real? The way this here is a dog's house. It was built for you. You're lying. That's what your father wants you to believe. He seems very much against it, has he? It's the only one. Uh, nope. Okay. Nice Daniel isn't really concerned about the others. He just wants to save Mara. Come on, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> he doesn't know about the cross, so is this his mind palace. What's up? Daniel is screwing things up. I think he's trying to change the I can understand, uh, well, as twisted as it appears to be, her trying to save her son, trapping him here. I'm not sure what illness he could have where this would save him if it's in his mind. Um, but how did her father get locked away in here and everyone else? I don't want to do Come on, Mrs. Wilson. Get it together. You're kind of my favorite character in a very weird, weird way. Go. 
are getting separated. They're seeing each other's memories. It's a picture Oliko is carrying. What we never got to see his past. What the hell are you doing, Daniel? It, it feels he as though he's making everything worse. He said he's trying to wake Mara up, so it seems to me that they are all trapped in Mara's mind. At least that's the impression I'm getting, which... Nothing but a bad dream. Get it together, Ike. A dream. Daniel, he used the word simulation as if this was some kind of a fake reality. It was stuck in it. Everything you've seen is crazy. What's Ike's part in all this? He seems to be separate from the rest in some way. As though he was necessary for things to progress a certain way. Or, what are you gonna do? We've already taken everything. And if he has to ask you for it, it means he couldn't take it, so... Take my light, Captain. Hmm. What's Ike's part in all of this? You're right. He knows what you did to him. She doesn't know what she did to him. And can you trust anything that Grandpa is actually seeing in here? What have you done to Kieran? Hmm. Oh, we're back here. To be an avoider is pure bliss. To be a seeker. On the other hand, you will open every door. Step into the darkest voids, driven by the urge to gain more knowledge. Stop! This is just one of your sick mind games. You give me more credit than I deserve. Yeah, I'm sure you built this. Sick mind game. It's yours. You are the creator. I knew it. Of course she is. Question is... Alright, so I made some good calls there. Her and her husband built, built this. But my, I guess my question is why she decided to trap the rest in here with her. I didn't create this. Where exactly I are they trapped? Hmm. I'll make sure you stay in here forever. How does that get him out? Alright, looks like it's the end. All right, let's see what the key does. If you'll truly be free, or if she created some <laughs> some other layer, and he'll still be trapped in here. A good programmer always does. I mean, there's a back door, but it's not usually the obvious one. Time to wake up. Huh? <laughs> Why is it not working? Mara got one over you guys. <laughs> he changed the code. Oh, that's what he was doing. I don't know, does that mean that there's no way he could try to save her afterwards? Rather than keeping everyone trapped here. So, reset time. Hmm. 
Hmm. You've re- you visited this grave quite a few times and it, it must have some significance. I, wa- I do wonder whether she did, in fact, have a miscarriage initially and then she had um, the boy and that's why she's so obsessed with keeping him um, and at all costs. <laughs> and she did make the changes so that they'd meet sooner once it, everything resets. Worked. Worked. Does she remember? Is this real? No. This is the first simulation we ever created. Yeah, so it's still trapped. It's our home, our way from home. We created this. Kind of does. I switched objects. The pyramid your father has. It's useless. Your wedding ring. What's the exit code now? Uh Aha. Switch things around. Your brother. He took over the whole program whilst you were in here. Oh, okay. I've tried so hard to get you out of here multiple times. Just as stuck in here as everyone else. So much bigger than you think. You have to wake up. You have to stop him. Alright, so he's giving her a way out. Maybe not so selfish as he appeared to be. curious to know because you know if her brother is the one who's controlling everything you know why did why, why does her father insist that she's the one that captured everyone here imprisoned everyone here All right. Yes. We're wrong about a mental institution, but they appear to be passengers on a ship of some sort. I, I don't know. Or crew members, but some of them are some unfamiliar faces. All right, sweet. So we're at a space station of some sort. Prometheus. Survival mission. Alright, so these are like what remains of maybe humanity. 2099. All right, the season finale of 1899. Um, and of course, I think we were all expecting a, a twist towards the end. Um, it wasn't all too surprising. I, I kind of figured, I believe two episodes ago, that we were in the future. And, you know, based on the technology that we've been seeing throughout, we couldn't possibly be still be in the same in 1899 or even present day to day. It would have to be some at some point in the in the distant future so i already figured that um, so i'm not too surprised by that um the part that's surprising for me i guess is that um you know that this crew i'm, I'm assuming are potentially what remains of humanity it, it says it's some sort of survival mission um so maybe earth destroyed and this is what remains and 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 they're supposed to find you know a safe haven somewhere in the stars I, i'm not sure if they're going in that direction um that, that that's what it appears to be I, I don't know how exactly this ties to um her son and and father being trapped in in, in the simulation uh 
That that's the part that I, I'm not quite clear on. I'm sure. I mean, we'll get into that in in the new season, right? Um, but if this is a survival mission, how exactly is her father trapped? When she did, when it panned around the room on the ship, there, we we didn't see her father. Um, we didn't see her son, or even her husband, right? We, we did. We saw Captain Ike. And I think a few other familiar faces, but for the most part, you know, there were just new persons that we've never seen before. Um, so I'm a bit unclear as to, you know, how it exactly it is that they're they're trapped. Um, is it a case that she somehow trapped them in her mind, which is the theory that I've been I've, I've been going with. Um, I'm definitely not right about the mental facility that got thrown out the window, but. Um, she was in fact this, this all was um, a figment of her imagination and, and some sort of construct that she created um, in her mind um, her father said to save her son um, I'm assuming that he was ill the fact that we keep revisiting um, the same grave in, inside her mind palace um, it, it, it seems that I'm, I'm going to assume that she did in fact have a miscarriage at some point um, she eventually tried again and had a son and apparently he was dying and there was no way to save him and she felt the only way to do that would be to trap him in her mind somehow um, yeah so I, I think there's some significance to the grave that, they, that that's being highlighted um, quite frequently uh, so yeah so I'm clear on that part I'm just not sure how exactly she hoped how exactly that ties directly into this survival mission but until we find out more about um you know these passengers and what they're what exactly they're trying to accomplish there's a whole lot we can say about that um i don't know what you know we don't know what the machine does i guess it places everyone in a simulation for this survival trip it's kind of like a stasis um, um sort of thing i i don't know that I get I mean it's 2099 all right we don't currently have the technology now to put living tissue in in, in cryostasis and without it deteriorating I don't believe I, I, it's been a minute since I've followed up on that that technology but I don't think currently that's possible so whatever this simulation is that they, they've actually put them in I'm going to assume that it, it, it keeps them frozen in time for the for the duration that they're within that construct assume i i don't fully know but otherwise i i can't really understand what would be the purpose of it um i, I really don't but and if her father felt as though he was going to save himself in it towards the end here and waking up where would he wake up to because there is no body for him to return to it could be and again we out of field theories here that um in this evacuation mission or survival mission whatever the case might be there were only there, there was only room for specific persons on the ship now, th this is just my my theory for the the what may be revealed in the next season that there, there's only room for a specific number of persons on this ship and uh, Moro is one of them being the great mind that she actually is and there was no way to take her family with her and uh, I'm going to assume that in order to take them with her in some way not physically but you know to take them with her um, she some technology was a, was available for her to have those persons uploaded to her memories and keep them there and I'm, I'm guessing that what her father was trying to accomplish that only one person can actually leave which is why he was so insistent on her staying there and whoever it is that found that key would have woken up in Mara's body um, again huge reach <laughs> um, huge reach I, I, I'm, I'm making right um, and so her husband was in you know intent on ensuring that she's the one that wakes up um she's the one that wakes up because only one of them really could 
Um, so I, I do think she did in fact trap them there in her mind, but not so much out of cruelty, um, so much as maybe wherever they're leaving from, because I, I still think there is some parallel in, ter parallel in terms of characters leaving one location and trying to find a home somewhere else. And I think that's what the Prometheus is. I think they're leaving Earth and trying to find hope on some distant planet of some sort. Um, so I still think that theme is very much relevant. Um, but there was limited space on that ship to take across the stars and Mora was insistent on taking her family with her and yeah even if that meant trapping them in her mind um so that that's my theory um going forward <laughs> let's see how that works out in the um in the, in the in the next season um her brother was was for the most part a, a huge mystery um you know throughout he was mentioned but we still couldn't figure out you know who he was we don't know what he looks like um, I think his name is um, Kieran. Um, we did see her receive a message from him here on the ship. Um, I'm going to hope that he's a real person. Um, based on what Daniel said, he said he is taking over the program while she slept. So I, I, I wonder, I think it's a case where um, Mara did help create all of this. Her brother, for some reason, woke up first. Um, I, 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 there was this... There was this film, I think it was Chris Pratt and, um, damn it, what's the actress's name? From Hunger Games, I forget her name, but Jen, um, Lawrence something, um, where to, the, this passenger ship was traveling, you know, similar, uh, a similar setting, or, um, traveling from one destination to another, last hope for humanity and so on. And there was a malfunction and two passengers woke up um, before. They woke up early before the trip. Unfortunately, the fact that they woke up meant that they could not go back into, in, into cryostasis and they would actually die. Um, and they, they had to sort of make the most of that time that they had left on the ship. Um, it was actually a very, very interesting, in, interesting film. So I'm wondering if it's something similar here where her brother woke up early and he unfortunately started to manipulate the program why i don't know maybe boredom um and and who knows who knows but i imagine whoever it is that's monitoring these sleeping passengers they're able to see their inner thoughts and, and regulate that and i would think they would have maybe some sort of ai program to manage that for the trip but maybe her brother woke up first for some reason maybe accidental or otherwise who knows and he's just been having a time of it and, and just um, doing whatever he wants. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that's my overall theory at the moment. Now, I am going to be quite saddened if we don't, if we don't see some of the familiar faces um, that we, we've been following so far. Some of them I, I fully expect we wouldn't see again. Um, I did see Ling Yi in, the, in one of the pods there. I think I saw Jerome. I'm not sure if it was him, but the the, the character, the the they seem to be. I mean, they're not in 1899. They're a lot more, um, you know, clean looking. It, it's hard to tell if who's who, <laughs> but um, I, I do think we saw Jerome. I do think we saw Lingyi. We saw Captain Ike, um, and I think Oleg. Um, I don't think we saw anyone else who was aboard the ship, but I, I am of the impression that, you know, those core characters, the ones who all had a, um, a letter, that all those characters are real and every, everything else is a, is a simulation. Um, I think there is a connection between what their minds constructed and what, to, and what is real. Um, it, it, it's it's similar to what Daniel said in that you know he, he moved things around. It's not it's not so much that everything is changing, just the connections have changed. Um, so I do think there is some reality, a sliver of reality to the things that they did mention and 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 express in that simulation. So Ling Yi and her mother, for example, um, saying you know it was a mistake to get on the ship. Um, we did see Ling Yi and her mother on on this this spacecraft traveling as well so i think yeah they are 
they did somehow manage to make the trip aboard this ship whether it's the same circumstances and they ended up killing someone to get on board this ship that remains to be seen but i do think there is some connection between what they experience in the simulation and what is actually real um i i, I think mara's father he did mention that you know um all these people came on this trip to forget or something to that effect i don't remember what his exact words were but that just adds to my theory that all these persons who had the letter um i don't know if maybe i don't know how the passengers were selected but it does appear as though these letters are essentially what you know what, what's guiding us as far as who's real and who's not so i think in reality these persons who received the letter in 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 real life they received the letter giving them um, a ticket aboard this ship um, to find new life elsewhere, um, not on Earth. Um, so I, I do think there is some connection between what we saw there and what's here. I, d I didn't see Mrs. Wilson. And in a weird way, Mrs. Wilson is my favorite character in the, in the series so far. I don't know if it's the actress. It, it may just be the actress. And maybe she's just really that good she's just been very intriguing and they've been highlighting her a whole lot for some reason but we didn't get into her backstory which which, which i found to be very interesting i just feel as though there is more to that character um and i could be absolutely wrong i i could be absolutely wrong um but the fact that she's the first person that Mar interacted with on the ship um, she was essentially the, the, the first giveaway that this this isn't real, you know. Um, she's the only character on the, uh, amongst the crew that speaks everyone's language. I, I, I didn't see her speak Portuguese, so I'm not sure if she speaks Portuguese. But um, essentially, I, I get the impression that there's just more for that character, and and I guess we'll see in the new season. I didn't see. I don't think I saw her when they did the pan um around the on, on the deck of the ship there um but i, I would I, I would miss her dearly if, if she was not in the new season i know she's a horrible person but she's an intriguingly horrible person <laughs> she's an intriguing person so she definitely is so that, that weirdly that is my favorite character of um of this season so far everyone is pretty much you know very intriguing the acting was phenomenal right across the board i think they all did a fantastic job um this ending i guess it was in a way similar to the um to, to the first season of dark and I, I know i'm saying this now because i know there's there's gonna be people are gonna draw comparisons you know um whether we, we whether it's necessary or not people are gonna try to compare the two um but i do think what this did differently and perhaps this was the writers taking feedback from the first um, from dark although i didn't have a problem with the pacing of dark i can see them maybe getting feedback that okay the, the pacing it took too long to get to those revelations that 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 mattered and and perhaps they decided to do things a bit differently in this series because we did get a lot of information very early on in this more so than we did in in, in the first season of dark um, this would be like season two's twist you know or midpoint in season two um, where, where we got into a, a major climax. So, so we, we got a lot more information a lot sooner than we did in Dark and that may be them getting feedback that, you know, people didn't love how long it took, the pacing, you know, they didn't love how long it took to get to the truth. And so they kind of peppered in a lot of information throughout this, the first season of this series. Um, now, interestingly, um, I'm curious to know how people feel about the the time period, given that we're now you know way in the future, way in the future. It's it's not time travel like uh, like Dark was, um, but it's still futuristic. Um, and because this, this the series is called 1899, I'm curious to know what the significance of that is, especially now that we're awake. Um, I do think we're going to be revisiting the simulation, so I don't think this is the end of it. But why do we keep um why specifically that period well, why do you know why is that important um it is my question you know what's the significance of it um her father spoke a lot about 
Plato and how it influenced Mara in in you know in her creation. So it's clear the authors are are you know similar to Dark. They're still pulling from a lot of um, different mythology. It's not I don't it's not just one. You know, pulling from different mythology um, and and kind of combining that with science fiction. And, and that's one of the things that I found most interesting about you know their work so far. It, it's blending um, fiction and, and 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 reality and and coming up with something that is palatable to you know mod, modern audiences. And I think they've done a fantastic job with that. Um, and of course, my favorite thing, um, which I, I I mentioned in the last episode, but you know just to kind of highlight it at the end here as well, is the the use of language. You know, um, as I've said, I'm trying to learn a, a second language. I am terrible at it because, well, because life and everything keeps getting in the way, or, or you know. But um, I'm a sucker for foreign languages, and I think, I think it was in Arrival. You know, for again, for those of you who have not seen Arrival, please watch it. It's a fantastic show, uh, a fantastic movie, I should say. Um, but there, there was a point in the film, and Arrival was a, a film about um, an alien aircraft, um, alien aircraft that makes an appearance on at several points on Earth. And um, I won't spoil it; just check it out. It's it's not typical alien film where oh the aliens are here to destroy us sort of thing. It, it's not, and language is very um, integral to that um, to that film and 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 the plot. So um, please check it out. Uh, but one of the things that w- that that was very interesting about that film um, was the, the woman that was doing the translations in, in in Arrival, and she spoke about speaking another language and how the moment your brain becomes wired to speak that language, it affects how you perceive things and you try you you, you sort of start to see things in a way that the native language, the native speaker, would typically does in, in, in a way that it, it affects your mind in the way that it affects your mind right um and i just thought that was really fa- that was a really fascinating way to look at things and i i think language as a whole is very important and i, I just think it's it's very relevant for, for for growth as an individual and i think i would recommend everyone try to learn a second language or multiple languages um, because it just gives you new perspective. It gives you new perspective. Um, and I think it, it's one step forward in learning to understand different people and different cultures and seeing them in, a, in an entirely new light. And, and again, as I said, I think that's essential for growth and, and, and understanding as just as a human being. Um, I think you know it's, we're at our best when we try to understand each other. And one of the ways in which we do that is is, is through language, um, and language and communication. So, yeah, and, and I think it was just exceptional use of that language in, in this series in particular. Um, I, I can imagine on set, and I, I need to find out whether there is a making of video, because I'm curious to know if these actors were all speaking their native languages. Um, whether they understood what their, you know, what the other was actually saying when they when they had a scene together, whether they understood each other or they were just reacting to what was being said to them, you know, because oftentimes I, I imagine when you do get a script, you you, you have your lines, but you also have an, have an idea what the what your partner will be saying, or if you're, you speak the same language, they'll speak and you will react to them. But when you're speaking a different language, it's a bit more difficult, a bit more nuanced. Um, so I am wondering whether they, they had a translator on set, or is it a case where maybe all the actors do speak each other's languages, which may or may not, that, that would be a lot more uh, difficult to find, um, or to just find get, an, get actors and actresses that are good actors and actresses, but also speak all these languages at the same time. Um, so I'm curious to know how exactly that that was executed on set. In the series, it was done phenomenally, and and I thought it was executed great. Um, you can communicate so much, you can infer so much, um, even if you don't understand a language completely. Some words, some terms are universal, regardless of what language it is that you speak, or there's some similarity in um, you know 
in, in pronunciation or, or and so on. So, uh, but body language is, is something that plays a huge part in that though. I think, I don't remember what the percentage is, but um, it, as humans, when we do communicate, a large part of that information that we receive is actually from, you know, from body language and how that person, um, what their demeanor is, how they're moving. Um, we, we pick up on a lot of that, right? Um, and so it was, it was just very intriguing to see that utilized in a series like that. I don't recall ever seeing something like that done on film. And, and it was just really fascinating to watch. And um, I'm grateful to the creators for it. I'm sure it was a lot of work. I, I imagine this was just a lot of work um, trying to navigate and guide um, these actors from with different languages, different cultures, and so on. It, it, it could not have been an easy task at all. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this series. Um, I, I can't wait for the for, for the next. I'm, I'm I'm not sure where we go from here. Um, now that we're in the future, I do think we're we're going to be revisiting the simulations. I don't think this is the end of it, especially since the title is 1899. I think there is some key there that we will need to revisit. So we won't be spending the majority of the, the you know the next season in um, in 2099. I don't think. Um, they probably should have set that a lot further than 2099 though we're, we're not that far off uh, but very interesting very interesting um all right guys that is it uh, for season one of 1899 uh, be sure to post down below in the comments let me know what your thoughts on this season as a whole did you see this ending coming i certainly didn't i, I mean I, I i got some things okay but um for the most part i, I you know I, I i didn't see this coming at all um, but I definitely enjoyed the ride. Um, remember to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to support the channel. And I'll see you for the next one.